All right, today we are going to look at what we call critical attributes of similar figures. Now, we have talked about similar figures in the past, so I just wanted to make sure you knew about this note that I referenced. Um, so in your interactive notebook, pages 31, 32, and 33 are all about similar figures. So remember, similar figures have um, corresponding sides that are proportional and corresponding angles that are congruent. And of course, those figures have to be the same type of shape and they have to be positioned in the same way. So for example, um, if we couldn't compare a rectangle to a triangle or a trapezoid to a triangle or anything like that. Okay, so we'll, we'll kind of review that as we're going through that today. So what I wanna show you guys is there's a couple ways with when we're talking about proportions, we've talked about within scale factors or factor of change and between scale factors and factor of change. So I just want to kind of review that with you today. And these numbers may be a little bit difficult for you to see, but I want to, I'll zoom in and write those numbers a little bit better to make sure that you can understand what's happening. So there's a lot of um, vocabulary on here that I'll be saying in the video, but it will also be on your scanned copy of your notes that you can reference as needed um, when we do get to that, okay? So the first thing I want to talk about, let's go ahead and talk about our vocabulary itself. A within ratio, in case you forgot, and a ratio is a comparison between two things, compares two attributes within one figure. So you're only looking at one shape at a time to the corresponding two attributes within another figure. Okay, so we're going to look at one figure at a time. So I'm just going to write some key phrases right here. So compare one shape at a time is um, within, okay? I'll just write within ratio. So when we're talking about within re ratio, that's comparing one ratio at a time. So if I look at these, these are both rectangles. They're both positioned the same way, so we're good to go. So I want to look at just one ratio at a time. And so this is 10 to 8. And this is actually how we talked about similar figures for the most part, okay? So if I have 10 to 8, I'll just use some different colors. I'm going to use pink for this line segment, A, B, or B, A. And I'm going to use blue for A, D, or D, A. So if I were to compare that just like that, I could say 10 compared to 8. So that's within one ratio at a time. So with ratios, we can always reduce. So 10 and 8 can both be divided by 2, and it gives me 5 to 4, okay? So over here, I have the number 15, and I have the number 12. Well, if you stop and think about it, we're writing one ratio at a time. So now we have to write a ratio within the second figure. So we're only comparing these numbers at the same time. Well, this pink line is in the same position as this 10. But remember with rectangles, their parallel sides are opposite and congruent. So if this is 15, that means this is 15, even though it wasn't labeled right there. So because I had the 10 as my pink in the same position, if I use my colors to help me out, in the same position, I'm going to do that pink with the 15, and in the same position as that 8 is the 12. So if we first look at it, 10 to 8 and 15 to 12 are not the same numbers, but we can reduce this as well by their greatest common factor of 3 and get 5 to 4. Okay? You could also go one step further and do this into a decimal. So 5 divided by 4 is 1 and 25 hundredths. Okay? So if you wanted to use your calculator, uh, to figure that out, we could just say numerator divided by denominator, and you get 1 in 25 hundredths, okay? So that's going to be actually what that ratio is within one figure at a time, okay? So that's our ratio itself. So we have a within ratio, and we also have what's called a between ratio. So within is looking at one shape at a time, so between is going to be between the two similar figures. So you're looking at both shapes at the same time, okay? And what we're going to be looking at is their corresponding sides. Remember, corresponding sides is the same relative position. So the pink and this pink were in the same position of that rectangle, the blue to the blue. So 10 to 8 was a within ratio. 
15 to 12 was a within ratio. They reduced down to the same thing. And remember, when we talked about similar figures in these previous pages, if their ratios reduce down to the same thing, then they are similar figures. Okay? And what we're going to look at is these are reducing down to a constant number. So, for example, these reduce down to that constant number of 5 to 4 or 1 in 25 hundredths. So let's kind of go through our checklist. So these are both trapezoids, but they're not positioned the same way. So if we were to rotate this smaller trapezoid and position it how this one was, so this is six right here, the longer side of these two parallel lines. So I'm going to put six right there. Ten is this slant up here, and four is right here. Okay, so in case you forgot about that, that's what we'd have to do. So ten, six, and four. These numbers are 25, 15, and 10, and all my units are kilometers. Okay, so that's something that we'd have to do. We have to draw that smaller shape inside. So when we're comparing two shapes at a time, that's called a between ratio. And it's really important for us to know the vocabulary because sometimes they're going to have you write what is the within ratio, what is the between ratio, and if you don't write specifically what they're looking for, you might fall for a tricky answer. Okay, so that's where we need to look at that. So remember, we're going to put that smaller trapezoid inside the bigger trapezoid just to kind of help us see where those numbers are. And I'm just going to use this number 10. Well, if you have this 10 right here, that's in the same position as that 25. And if I use this number 4 right here, that's in that same position of the 10, okay? So I'm just using any two numbers from those trapezoids. But what's going to be different now is we're going to look at this, the two shapes at the same time, okay? So let's say that I'm going to compare the smaller trapezoid to the... Uh, bigger trapezoid. Let's think about that. Because again, we're looking at both shapes at the same time. So in this one, I'm not going to write 10 to 4 because that's within one shape. I'm going to write 10. Well, 10 is my pink line. And in the same corresponding, the same relative position on the bigger one is 25. So that's my ratio for that. But I need to write more than one ratio to make sure that it's constant. So another number I use, well, if I said smaller to bigger, then my next ratio also needs to be smaller to bigger. So one of the other numbers I used from the smaller trapezoid was 4. And in the same position of that 4 on the bigger trapezoid is 10. Okay? So 10 to 25 is not the same thing as 4 to 10. So I can reduce by 5 up here, and that gets me 2 to 5. 4 and 10 can both be divided by 2. And that gets me to 2 to 5, okay? You can also see this last number. So see this 6 is in the same position as that 15. So if I said 6 to 15, I could divide by 3. So smaller trapezoid to bigger trapezoid, and I still get 2 to 5, okay? So this is a constant ratio. Because it's a constant ratio, I do know that these figures are similar, Okay, so kind of reviewing back of how we're doing that. So just so you know, when you're, you have to be very careful when you are looking at the shapes, at, the, at two shapes at the same time. Because if I said 10 to 25, that's smaller to bigger. But then if I turned around and said uh, 10 to 4, that's backwards. That's bigger to smaller. So that's why you want to write out with your labels, okay? All right. So what we can use also is what we call scale factors. And I know I've been using that word a lot. Scale factors are numbers that we use to multiply, to, to determine if the similar figure is a reduction, an enlargement, or is a congruent shape. So scale factors that are less than 1 but greater than 0 yield or produce what we call a reduction. So it's going to be a smaller picture. So if you reduce something, you're going to be making that smaller. So if we have this rectangle right here, and this, oh, sorry, triangle, not rectangle. Got ahead of myself. Just wipe this out. 
And we looked at my numbers and I saw that it was a right triangle. All right, so there's my triangle there, and I have another triangle right here, okay? So these, this number right here was three for the height. Let me just kind of move this over. This was three feet right here. This was five feet. This was six feet, and this was 10 feet, okay? When we're looking for a reduction, think about it. You read from left to right. So this first picture is bigger than the second picture. So from here, to here, our picture got smaller, okay? Our triangle got smaller. So if you think about it, a lot of you guys would say, okay, well, I don't really see multiplication, but what I do see is from this corresponding side, think about it this way, this 10 corresponds with this five. Well, what would your brain do right there? You would say, well, 10 divided by two is five, okay? And you're like, but I don't see multiplication. We're going to get to that in just a minute. Well, this 6, the height of the triangle, is in the same position as that 3. Let's stop and think about it. From 6 to 3, don't you also divide by 2? And in case you forgot about dividing, if I were to divide by 2, that is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal, which is 1 half. Okay, remember when we multiplied and divided with fractions? When you divide by fractions, 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1. So if I write the reciprocal of that, that's 1 over 2. Okay, if you don't believe me, watch this. 6 times, that's my original number, 1 half, and 10 times 1 half, because I just said multiply by 1 half is the same thing as divide by 2. We multiply fractions, both numbers are fractions, and you go straight across. 6 times 1 is 6. 1 times 2 is 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3. That's what we have right there. And this one, 10 times 1 is 10, 1 times 2 is 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5. And that's what we have right there. Okay, so dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. Dividing by 4 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 fourth. It's just that reciprocal, okay? So remember, scale factors are only numbers that we multiply. So you'd have to be very careful on this one because a lot of your brains would say divide by 2, but if they ask what the scale factor is, it's not 2, it's actually 1 half. Okay? And again, if you look at this vocabulary, so I'm going to say scale factor is 1 half. So the answer to this problem, because scale it's greater than zero, but less than one. Okay, that's another way we could have ruled out that number two. Number, uh, when the number two represents a factor of change, factors changes when we divide, but I just wanna kinda see how I know most of y'all would see that with divided by two and, and showing you how to go around that, okay? Well, if we have scale factors that are greater than one, then that's gonna be yielding or producing an enlargement. So if it's an enlargement, that means that it's bigger. So if I have this rectangle right here, where this measure is three and this measure is five, okay? And then I have this bigger rectangle over here where this length is six and its width is 10, okay? That one's a little bit easier for us to see as well. We can say, okay, from left to right, because think about how you read, it's from left to right. From left to right, did my picture get bigger or smaller? You can physically see that the picture got bigger. It's a bigger rectangle. So from this length, or the height of the rectangle, if you think about it, from three to six, I multiply by two. From five to 10, so this is my width or my um, base of the rectangle, I do times two. Again, it's that constant number. It has to be the same number in order for it to be that ratio, okay? So my scale factor for this is going to be two. Remember, scale factor is a number that we multiply. So we didn't have to do anything else on this one. The only reason we had to do something different on this one is we saw division, but dividing is the same thing by multiplying by its reciprocal. So remember, think about it this way. Two over one and its reciprocal Reciprocal, reciprocal, sorry, is one half. 
okay? That's when our numerator and denominator flip spots, okay? Well, what about if your scale factor is just 1? Because we've talked about between 0 and 1, we've talked about greater than 1, but what if you just have a 1? Well, think about it. If you multiply anything by 1, it's itself. So that's going to give you a congruent number, or in this case, a congruent shape, okay? So if I have 8 and 3 for this parallelogram, and I have 8 and 3, well, stop and think about it. How do you get from left to right? 8 times 1 is 8 in this same position. 3 times 1 is 3. So your scale factor is going to be 1. Okay. So knowing what our scale factor is, if your scale factor is 1, you're getting the exact same shape, so it's going to be a congruent shape. If your scale factor is greater than 1, so 1 1.5, 2, 3, 8, as long as it's bigger than 1, anything that you're multiplying, you're getting bigger. If it's going to be greater than 0 but less than 1, so it's in between those numbers, it's going to be a reduction. So we're showing you with the picture, but sometimes they don't give you the picture, they just give you the scale factor itself. And we're going to be using this information uh, in our next couple of lessons as well. Okay, then the last thing I just want to end with, um, and I appreciate your patience because I know this has been a lot of detail for you. When you are talking about similar figures, this little squiggly symbol actually means similarity. Okay, so this little squiggly symbol means similarity. Okay, so if they have that in between two shapes, that means they're similar figures. Then if you have an equal sign, with that little squiggly above it, that actually means mathematically congruency. Okay, so that means that they're the exact same. So if I said that triangle ABC was similar, um, let me show you like this. So in this one up here, triangle, triangle ABC is similar to this triangle right here, and that's triangle DEF. Well, remember, your angles, um, your corresponding angles are the same. So I could say that angle A, well, here's angle A right here. That's in the same position as that angle D. So that's going to be congruent to angle D. Okay? Or I can even say this one right here, angle B, I'm going to do two lines, two little squigglies on that. Angle B is congruent in the same position as that angle E. Okay, because similar figures have corresponding sides that are proportional and corresponding angles that are congruent. So lots of vocabulary that we looked for with that today, so hopefully this will help you on your lesson. But of course, always reach out to us if you need help.